Thanksgiving is a master key, part two. You will recall on the first Sunday of the year, uh, God helped us to share on a sermon titled, Let Us Exalt His Name Together, on January 2nd. And during that sermon, I reminded you that you make a personal commitment in 2022 to be thankful to God. You make a personal commitment to be thankful to God. Also mentioned that you give thanks with your body, you give thanks with your voice, and that this year, let God smell a sweet savour with your thanksgiving. And then finally, I mentioned, as you always be laid in my heart, that thanksgiving is a master key. I was a part one. It works in the time of battle. It works in the time of sorrow. It works in the time of lack. It works in time of sickness. And so on and so forth. This morning, the Almighty God would like to continue on that series. Thanksgiving is a master key. Number one, give thanks with your substance. For some reason, this sermon has been impressed on my heart since that second of January to preach it and continue the sermon. To preach it and continue the sermon. Praise the Lord. Give thanks with your substance. And please, as you listen, when you hear your own words, you say a loud amen, and you turn it into prayers. Give thanks with your substance. Giving is a form of thanksgiving. When you give to the Lord, you are saying, thank you, Lord. Many of us don't realize that. That giving is a form of thanksgiving. In John chapter 3, verse 27, it tells us that a man can receive nothing except it is given from above. So whenever you give to God, you are actually giving from the gift that God already gave you. And you are saying with that giving, thank you, Lord. I pray for someone here today and those that are listening all over the world. The grace to be able to say thank you, Lord, with your giving. May God Almighty increase in you in the mighty name of Jesus. I say it one more time. The grace to be able to say thank you, Lord, with your giving. May God increase it in you in Jesus' name. So giving is a form of thanksgiving. The second point. Be generous towards God. Many of us are very generous towards ourselves, very generous towards our families, sometimes very generous towards our relatives, but stingy towards God. In 2022, make a change. In 2022, make a change. The sermon you are hearing this morning is really about the principles, the core principles that will move your life forward this year. So let him that has ear to hear, hear what the Spirit is saying. Be generous towards God. In First King chapter 3 verse 4 that we read, he said, King Solomon gave a thousand bond offerings. I asked myself, how, why is it that the Bible is very specific in terms of the number of bond offerings that Solomon gave? You could have said, Solomon gave an offering unto the Lord. But God specifically pointed out the quantity so that they can show how big the generosity 
of Solomon was towards God. Solomon was not the first king in Israel, but Solomon was the most generous of the kings. That is why his life was a life of abundance. I pray for you from the bottom of my heart. In this year, 2022, the grace to be generous towards your maker. May God grant unto you in Jesus' name. When you study the life of David as well, David is someone that God looked at and said, my mercy will never depart from you forever. David was such that God said, I will bless you in your lifetime. And after you are dead, I will continue to bless your children, your generation forever and ever. Study the life of David and then understand the reason why he got an everlasting promise of blessing. One of the reasons why David got such an everlasting promise of blessing was because he was also a generous giver towards God. In 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 24. 2 Samuel 24, verse 24. David wanted to give an offering unto God. And then he was looking for a place to give the offering. And of course the materials. And the king said, I can give you land, I can give you oxen for free. And go and give an offering to your maker. David said, no, 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 no. I will not give God what does not cost me something. In other words, I want my giving to God to be such that I will feel it. That's one of the reasons why God decided to bless David in an everlasting manner. I pray one more time for you. <laughs> the principle that God is communicating to you today to be generous towards your maker the grace to apply it so that you can receive an everlasting blessing. May God grant unto you in Jesus' name. We can go back to the summary of the, of the message. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, which you are also very familiar with, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, some of these passages are mentioning them, you can write them down, they are not on the screen. It says, He that sweats sparingly shall reap sparingly. And he that sweats abundantly shall reap. The nature of blessings that you will reap in 2022 will mirror the quality of your giving to God. As I was preparing this message, God reminded me of what happened around 20, 2004. And I've told this before a few times in this church. The church needed something. We were struggling then financially, even my family. But my wife and I decided to give God something, the money that we have saved to use for something. And as I was giving the pastor then the, the check, my hand was shaking. <laughs> my hand was shaking. Because it was truly a giving with a lot of sacrifice. I, I, was, I was shaking. But the rest, they say, is history. I pray for somebody here from the bottom of my heart. The giving that will make a way for you in 2022. The grace to release it to your maker. May God grant unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Number three, be humble in your giving. Be humble in your giving. In 2 Kings chapter 3 that we're using as the anchor passage. Solomon not only gave generously. The Bible said after he gave and God spoke to him, what do you want? Solomon began to explain to God how God has been good towards him, how God has been good towards his family, and how he's a small boy and he doesn't know how to go in and out. Solomon gave not only generously, he gave with humility. Let's turn to verse 7 of that passage. First Kings chapter 3, verse 7. He gave with humility. And now, O Lord God, 
Thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father. And I am but a I am but a a little child. I don't know how to go out. I don't know how to come. He gave God not only generously but in humility. In this year 2022 the grace for you to give in humility may God grant unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. So that you know that you are giving not because you are a big man or a big woman. You are giving in spite of it all. You are still little before God. It is those that are little, that consider themselves little, that God will lift up this year. I pray for you, you will humble yourself, that God will lift you up this year in the mighty name of Jesus. Why don't you rise on your feet and say, Father, this year help me to give and to give you in humility. Talk to God. Help me to give you generously and to give in humility. Talk to the Lord. To give to you generously and to give to you in humility. Talk to the Lord. This is the master key that will open the door of blessing to your family this year. This is a master key that will bring to you the things you have been waiting for. Father, help me to give and to give in humility. Because without you, I can receive nothing. Help me, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. May God answer your prayers in Jesus' name. Number four, thanksgiving opens the door of God. That's why in the flyer of today's sermon, you see the picture of a key. How many of you would like to open the door of the Almighty this year? How many of you would like to experience the uncommon favor of God this year? Thanksgiving opens the door of God. In 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 5, the Bible said, when God saw the offering of Solomon, Solomon kept on giving. He kept on giving. He kept on giving until he had slaughtered 1,000 unto the Lord. The Bible said God responded in verse 5. Solomon, what do you want? Solomon did not ask, but because of the generosity of Solomon, God gave him a blank check and said, Solomon, exactly what do you want? I'm believing God for somebody today. That as you apply this sermon in your life, God Almighty will give you a blank check. <laughs> as you apply this sermon in your life, you will open the door of the Almighty. I've studied the Bible a little bit, just a little bit. It's not, I've not found an equivalent where God on his own said, tell me exactly what you want. The generosity of Solomon opened the door of favor. I prophesy upon your life. As you hold on to this word of the Lord and you turn it into a lifestyle, the door of favor, the door of grace, the door of abundance, the door of divine intervention, may he be opened unto you and your family in the mighty name of Jesus. In Psalm 100 verse 4, Psalm 100 verse 4, you also hear it said there, that we come into his presence with thanksgiving. Whenever you appreciate God and you say, I'm appreciating God, I am giving to God, you are able to open the door of the Almighty. And this year, 2022, I say it one more time. You're giving to the Almighty. We open the door of the blessing you have been looking for in Jesus' name. Amen. Number five, on this first part of the sermon, Thanksgiving multiplies your harvest. And this is the biggest part of this first section. 
Thanksgiving multiplies your harvest. Solomon gave and gave and gave and gave and gave and gave. When God said unto him, Solomon, exactly what do you want? Solomon replied and asked for wisdom. He asked for understanding. And when you studied verses 12 and 13, you will understand the power of thanksgiving. That is why the sermon is titled, Thanksgiving is a master key. It's one thing for you to pray. It's another thing for you to open the door of God's grace. That is a way you open the door of grace. Solomon opened that door with giving and he received two layers of harvest. Harvest, first layer, verse 12. We are going to read. Open to that verse 12. Let's just take a look at it. In verse 12 of First Kings chapter 3, verse 12. Let's open to it very quickly. First Kings chapter 3. First Kings chapter 3, verse 12. God said to Solomon, God said to Solomon, what you have asked for, I have done according to your words. In other words, the prayer you prayed, Solomon, the things that you desired, that you have asked me after I said to you, what do you want? I have given to you. I don't know what it is you are believing God for this year. But as you apply the wisdom into this sermon, I join my faith with yours. Every prayer request that you make and everything that you ask of the Lord, may you receive in the mighty name of Jesus. Please rise on your feet and begin to talk to the Lord. Let him know what you desire this year. That as you apply the wisdom of his word this morning, as you apply what you are hearing, as he did for Solomon, God also will do for you. Go ahead and talk to the Lord. Say, behold, I have done according to your words. God said, what you have asked me, I have given. Say, Lord, as I apply your words, as I follow the wisdom in what Solomon did, Lord, remember me too and turn my prayers into testimony. Talk to the Lord. Said, I have done according to your words. What are you believing God for this year? What are you trusting God to do for you this year? Go ahead and talk to God. Say, I have done according to thy words. The giving of Solomon made God to grant unto him what he asked for. Everything that you desire, bring it before God right now. And say, Lord, as I give to you in thanksgiving, as I become more generous towards you, as I give to you in humility, as I lay the foundation of 2022 in generosity towards you, Father, turn my prayers into testimony. Turn my prayers into testimony. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. And before you sit down, verse 13, before you sit down, verse 13, is the multiplication. Verse 13. God said, I have also given thee that which you have not asked for. Is there anybody here this day that wants a Jara blessing? Even the blessing that you have not asked for. God saw the generous heart of King Solomon. He said, Solomon, what you have asked, I have given you. And even the one you have not asked for, I will give you. I prophesy upon your life. As you follow the word of God you are hearing this morning, even the blessing that you have not asked for, may God Almighty release unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. He said to Solomon, Solomon, you did not ask for riches, but I have decided to make you rich. I prophesy upon your life. In 2022, may you never know poverty again in your life. In 2022, as you follow the counsel in the word of God, the riches that you have never experienced in your life, even the riches that you have not asked for, 
May God Almighty release unto you in Jesus' name. God said to Solomon, you have not asked for honor, but I have decided to give you honor. I pray for somebody here today. May God honor you in 2022. As you honor God in your giving, as you honor God in your generosity, as you honor God in your humility, may God grant you honor. The honor that you have never asked for. The honor that you cannot imagine. The honor that no one in your family has ever received. May God crown you, crown you with it in the mighty name of Jesus. God said to Solomon, even though you have not asked for long life, as you follow my counsel, I will make you to have a long life. I pray for somebody here today. You will not die young. I said one more time, you will not die young. As you follow the will of God, God will grant you good, long life. God will grant you perfect health in the mighty name of Jesus. You to go ahead and turn into prayer and say, Father, bless me beyond my prayers. Bless me beyond my expectation. Talk to the Lord. That is why you are here today. That you will turn what you are hearing, you will turn it into prayers. Solomon prayed for a specific thing. God gave it to him and gave him what he did not ask for. Say, Father, bless me beyond my prayers. Bless me beyond my expectation. Even the things that I have not asked for. Father, please release unto me. 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 In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. I decree upon your life one more time. In the name that is above every other name. The name Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In this year, 2022, as you follow the counsel of God, God will bless you beyond your prayers. God will bless you beyond your expectations. And so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. God bless you. You can take your seat. The next is give thanks with your time and your talent. Give thanks with your time and your talent. You see, I've spent quite a bit of time this morning talking about giving thanks with your substance. What God has given you, part of it, use it to say thank you to the Lord. But you also will give thanks this year or should give thanks this year with your time and your talent. Get involved why you still can. Please write it down. That's why it's on the screen. Get involved with serving God why you still can. In John chapter 9, verse 4. John chapter 9, verse 4. Jesus said, I must walk the works of him that sent me why it is day. The night comment when no man can walk. A time is coming that you want to serve God, but you are not able to. You even say to them, oh, pastor, I want to become a worker. And they say, ah, you are too old. You are now 100 years, 90 years old. You go and rest, relax for now. Or maybe you are unhealthy, but that will not be your portion in Jesus' name. But the time is coming when the things you could have done earlier, you will wish you want to do, but it's, the time has passed. When you offer to serve the Lord, you are saying, thank you, Father, for the privilege to be available to serve you. Brethren, I cannot conclude this sermon without this second part of it. Throughout this month, God kept on reminding me, this part, this part, you must remind them. When you offer yourself to God in service, you are saying, thank you, Lord. And you offer yourself to God at an acceptable time. 
That John 9 verse 4 says, A time is coming when no man can walk. You cannot guarantee tomorrow. Tomorrow may be too late. A friend of mine recently was in the hospital. The sisters were there to see her. After they finished seeing her in the evening, they said, okay, tomorrow uh, we'll come again and see you. That night, she died. And when we were, I was at the burial program, one of the sisters said, if I had known that she won't be here the next day, I would have stayed with her that night. It was a normal conversation. Oh, she, she looked well. Everything was fine. I'll, I'll see you again tomorrow. She didn't see tomorrow. Very young person. She didn't see tomorrow. Offer yourself to God while you still can. Number two, use his gifts for his glory. God has very painstakingly increased his gifts in your life. He has given you specific talents. Maybe you are an accountant, maybe you are an engineer, maybe you are a lawyer, you are a medical practitioner, you are a trader, whatever it is. Those gifts, those talents, those trainings that God gave unto you, is not for you to use for yourself and your family alone. Hello? God gave you those skills. He took you through those training. You went through the schools that you went through so that you can bring the talent back to your maker. Use the gift of God for the glory of God. John 3, 27. It says, a man can receive nothing except it is given from above. How many of you have a talent here? You know that you have a gift, you have a talent. That you are not empty as a human being. You are not empty. Can I see your hand up? You are not empty as a human being. There is a talent, there is a gifting of God in your life. That gifting will not be wasted in the mighty name of Jesus. That gifting will be used for his glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Number three, honor God more than man. Honor God more than man. Every one of us will use these talents in our businesses, in our workplaces. We work hard. We rise up very early in the morning to go to our businesses, to go to our work. Sometimes you work extra hours during the week. You work weekends to use your talent in the business, in the place of work, in the things of man. But how well have you used talent in the house of God? That same talent as an engineer, as a lawyer, as an architect, as a doctor, as a nurse, whatever line of business you are, how well have you used it for the, glory, for the advancement of God's work? That's what God has asked me to also remind you this morning. Before the first month of this year is over, honor God more than man. Service to God. When you enlist in the service of God, you are sowing a seed of power, a seed of blessing. I'm going to read this one to you and then I close the sermon. Isaiah chapter 38, verse 1 to 5, the New Living Translation technical department. Isaiah 38 verse 1 to 5. Some of us don't understand the, the full blessings of serving God. When you decide to serve God, you are sowing a seed, a mighty seed of blessing for yourself and your family. This was a king. At that time, Ezekiah became deadly healed. And the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to visit him. He gave the king this message. This is what the Lord says. Set your affairs in order. First, we are going to die. That was the message to the king. You will not recover from this illness. 
when Ezekiah had this, he turned his face to the wall and he prayed to God. Remember, O oh Lord, how I have always been faithful to you. And I've served you. I have served you single-mindedly. How many of you can truly say to God, in your hour of need, in your moment of need, in your moment of crisis, you too can face the wall like King Isaiah said, did and say, God, you know how much I have served you. How many of you can do that? But look at the story. Always doing what pleases you. Then he broke down and he wept bitterly. Verse 4. Then this message came to Isaiah from the Lord. The Lord heard what the man said. And he said to the prophet, Go back to Ezekiah and tell him, This is what the Lord, the God of your ancestor David says, I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. And we had 15 years to your life. You will not die again, Ezekiah, because you have reminded me how much you serve me. When you are serving God, you are sowing the seed of a mighty blessing. That's what saved the life of the king. I pray for you and for the whole of your family that this year you will give thanks with your substance. You will give thanks with your time. You will give thanks with your talent. You are here this morning. You say, Pastor, please pray for me. Pray with me. I just want to surrender my life to God. The best gift you can give and the first gift you must give is your life. So you are here this morning and say, Pastor, pray for me. Pray with me. I want to come into this family. The Bible says, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. When you are when in the family of God, even when they say it's your time to die, God can say, no, I reject it. He will not die. When you ask for one thing, God can multiply it like he did unto Solomon. But you must belong to that family. So you are here this morning and say, Pastor, pray with me. I want to join this family of limitless grace. Please come, I want to pray with you very quickly. Come, as the choir take the song, My Hope is Built on Nothing Else. God is here for you in 2022. God will help you in 2022. God will move you forward in 2022. Please come. Let's clap for them. As you come into the family of God, it will move your life forward. God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. God bless you, my sister. Keep coming. God bless you, my brother. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. God bless you, my brother. Keep coming. Let's take this song. Keep coming. Let's clap for them as they come. God will help you this year as you surrender your life. Let's clap for them. Are you not happy for them? Keep clapping. Keep clapping. This year, as you surrender your life to him, he will help you. Keep coming. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you, my sister. Come. Keep coming. Keep coming. Show the words of the songs to them. Show the words of the songs. Keep coming. Keep coming. God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. This year, God will help you as you surrender your life to Him. God bless you, my sister. Come. 
God bless you. God bless you. Clap for them. This is the harvest of the Lord. Keep coming. Keep coming if you are there. Come quickly. I want to pray with you. of you that are joining us all over the world, you want to also surrender your life, just stand wherever you are, all over the world, just stand wherever you are, you are also surrendering your lives, and just say after me, my Lord Jesus, thank you for saving my life, please be the Lord over my life from today, help me, make me a member of your family, and the grace that is in the family, let it be, ab let it be available unto me. Deliver me from my past, O oh God. And the newness in Christ, let it be my portion from today. I shall not return to my vomit, but shall dwell forever in you as my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed.